Never forget what God has done for you. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's Ephesians 4.32. And it's funny, because when I was younger, I had learned this verse for Sunday school, but I didn't realize that I had only memorized like a little bit of it. Because when I memorized it, I just memorized, be kind to one another, Ephesians 4.32. But then when I got a little bit older and I started reading the Bible for myself, I came to this verse and I found that it was a little bit longer than I thought. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And this verse has really become one of my all-time favorite verses because it's something that it's something that is really helpful for me to remember. Memorizing this verse has really helped me in my own life. And to remember that the Bible says be kind to one another, that's that's very helpful, but it's even more helpful to remember why it says we should be kind to one another. Kind and compassionate and forgiving. Compassionate means to like care about other people. Like if someone is hurting, you are compassionate if you care and you want to help them. And we should be kind and compassionate to one another and forgive one another because God forgave us first. Because of God's kindness and his compassion and forgiveness for us, we should be kind and compassionate to others and forgive them. You know, in my house, we really like waffles. We like to have waffles for breakfast. And my mom's got this waffle iron where she she makes the waffles. And a waffle is kind of like a pancake with like a bunch of square-shaped holes in it that can hold syrup. And that's my favorite thing about waffles. I love to fill up every single one of those squares with with a bunch of syrup. And the other day after we had waffles, my brother Stephen, he wanted to be helpful. And so he went and he gathered up all the plates and he was going to take them and put them in the sink. And my plate especially had a lot of syrup on it. Well, mine and my mom's had a lot of syrup on them. And he picked up my plate last and he put it on a stack and he started to turn around to go to the to the kitchen. But as he was turning to go take the plates to the sink, he got his hand like caught on the table or the chair or something. I don't know exactly what happened, but he ended up spilling all the plates on my head. And syrup in hair is nasty. I had plates full of syrup like hanging off of my head and oh, it was so sticky and gross. But I did not get mad. I feel like in a normal situation, I would have been furious. You know, sticky, sticky, nasty syrup up in your hair. Yeah, nobody likes that. But I was able to stay calm and cool and collected and not, not you know, like yell at him or anything like that. Because I had done something very similar, like literally 20 minutes before that. So like when my mom makes waffles, she makes them in the waffle iron. She has to make them one at a time. And so normally we always wait until my mom or whoever is cooking is done cooking before we eat. But with waffles, we start eating right when they're coming out. And so my mom ends up eating last. And I had my waffle and I put some syrup on my waffle and I had finished the bottle of syrup. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to be helpful. And so I went into the pantry and got the other bottle of syrup that we had. And the bottle, it comes with like this little thing that's like under the cap that you have to pull off. And then you got to screw the cap back on. And I was like, I'm not just going to get the syrup bottle. I'm going to take that little thing off and put the cap back on. Well, I got the bottle of syrup and I took the little thing off. But when I put the cap back on, I wasn't paying that much attention. And I just set it on the top. You're supposed to screw the cap on. I just set it on the top. I knew I was supposed to screw it on. I, I just forgot. And so when my mom was finally done making the waffles, she she came over to the table. She had a couple waffles on her plate and she went to pour some syrup on her waffles. And my mom doesn't usually put as much syrup as I do on her waffles, but she still likes syrup. And so she was going to put some syrup on her waffles. But when she tipped it over, the lid just popped off and the syrup went blub, 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 blub all over her waffles. And it was like a lot of syrup. Like it was overflowing over the side of our plate and you could barely see the waffles anymore. They were under so much syrup and and there was even some syrup that got, you know, on the table and even on her clothes. And I was like mortified because I was like, I, I knew what happened right away. I was like, I forgot to screw the cap on and I tried to be helpful, but I ended up causing a mess and I, I just felt awful. But my mom, she was, she was totally fine. And my dad was too. I thought that both of them would get really mad at me, but they were, they were okay And they were really patient with me and they were very kind to me. And I told them I was sorry for not screwing the cap on. I helped clean it up and and then then it was fine. 
And so then fast forward like 20 minutes and my brother spilled plates full of syrup all over me. You know, he was trying to be helpful, but he was being a little bit careless. And because of that, something messy happened. And because that exact thing had just happened to me, and because my parents had just shown me such a great example of kindness and compassion and forgiveness, it was a lot easier for me to do the same for my brother. What I had done and what was done for me was fresh in my mind, and that made it easy. And that's why it's so important for us to always remember what God has done for us in sending his son Jesus to die for our sins. Because if we can recognize and remember what God has done for us, that can make kindness and compassion and forgiveness a lot easier. You know, none of us are perfect. You have sinned and I have sinned. We have all done things that, that make God sad. We've all done things that separate us from God. And because of our sin, we deserve to be separated from God forever. But God loves us so much that he decided to pay the penalty for our sins himself, to take the punishment that we deserved so that we could live forever with him. Not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. And if we believe in Jesus Christ, we will have eternal life. That is the best gift anyone could ever give. The greatest and most incredible example of kindness and compassion and forgiveness the world has ever seen. And a lot of times we feel like the hero of our own stories, right? But the hero of our story is Jesus. And if we remember that, it's easier to be kind to other people. And sometimes kindness can look like forgiveness, like someone spills syrup on you and you forgive them. Just like through Jesus, God forgave us. But more than just forgiveness, kindness and compassion can look like helping people, being there for people. Through our words and our actions, we can show kindness and compassion to one another. If someone needs something to eat, you can give them a sandwich. If someone's having a hard day, you can give them words of encouragement or even something as simple as a smile. And so my challenge to you guys today is that you would be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. That comes straight out of Ephesians 4.32. And I hope that you will never forget what God has done for you. Because if we can remember that, kindness and compassion and forgiveness, they'll just come pretty much automatically. You know, I remembered what my parents had done for me, and so it was easy for me to, to be kind to my brother. But the same is true if I remember what God has done for me. Even in the midst of our sin, Jesus Christ came to die to save us so that we could live forever with him. And we're not kind or compassionate or forgiving to earn God's kindness, compassion, or forgiveness. He gives it freely. And because he has given to us, we can give to others. Be kind to one another. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And hey, have you ever had someone who who did something kind for you or someone who forgave you? You know, obviously Jesus has. But can you think of a situation where someone forgave you for something that you did? How did you feel? You probably felt pretty good. And I think it's really important for us to always remember what God has done for us, but I think it's also good for us to remember what other people have done for us too. Or at least remember the good things people have done for us. It doesn't do anybody any good to hold grudges to remember all the bad things people have done, but if you remember all the good things people have done, that can help too. But hey, it doesn't matter if someone deserves our kindness, because we didn't deserve God's. God wants us to be kind and compassionate and forgiving no matter what. It's hard, but it does not compare to how hard it was for Jesus to die for us, to save us from our sins. He paid the ultimate price for us, and because of that, we can be kind to others.